So today is uh, December 17th, and uh, I've been hunting with my bow, but uh, I've got my uh, 257 Weatherby right there. That's the one that uh, Jarrett and him built for me. I'll probably bow hunt this afternoon. It's about 40 degrees and the wind's out of the west, about 10 miles an hour. See, once I leave the truck, I turn that light off. <laughs> So I'm in a box this morning, and I'm situated. The reason I'm in a box is because I just didn't feel like climbing this morning. I want to get out of the wind. I worked a lot this week, and uh, it's in the wind all day yesterday. So we're going. I want to be comfortable this morning. So we're going to sit here and uh, enjoy it. So these deer right here that are coming toward me, that lane that they're coming out from is actually straight where the wind was blowing to. How they did not smell me, I have no idea, but I've had several like that this year that uh, they never did uh, smell me or sense me. Some of, sometimes they're like that. They come out and never sense you. And then sometimes when they'd be 200 yards away and smell you, break and run. <laughs> Go to snorting and blowing. But uh, so these four, they end up going over here on this other lane in a minute and go down there toward where the feeder is, where the those other, door, the other deer are uh, down there feeding also. This is the same four deer that I was just filming in the clip before. They've come from my left to my right in this main lane where the feeder is sitting. That's the first one coming out. And that was a that was a good day. I seen uh, I think three really big does this morning. You'll see the others here, they come on out. So that'll put seven down there on the field uh, total that are uh, that are out there feeding on it right now. This is a small rack seven point. I've seen him several different times this morning. I've actually seen him quite a few times throughout the whole season this year. And there's no need in uh, shooting him or anything. Just let him go. This is him. He's actually come across and walking across. The deer, they'll do that a lot. They'll go in a circle from one lane to the other. So if you happen to trying to look at one on one lane just give it just a second they'll be over on the next lane just in a in a minute or so the only thing down there is the trough feeder 
and the spin feeder. I keep stuff in, in both of them all the time. The spin feeder, I keep um, corn in it. I've got it running 10 seconds in the morning and 10 seconds in the afternoon. Of course, that's a pretty good bit of corn that it's putting out. And in the trough feeder, I keep uh, pellets and stuff in it, mixed in it. Sometimes I'll put some just some raw soybeans in there with some corn too and they'll they'll feed on that but i enjoy sitting there watching them like i said this and just not you know not big enough for for me to shoot i mean a kid or something like that or something that is you know that'd be fine but i'm pretty selective on uh what i shoot Productive morning this morning. Good morning this morning, too. I think I've seen 13 total at one seven point. Just, uh, he needs a couple more years to grow, whether he'll make it that long or not. I don't know. Time will tell. I think we lose a lot of deer around here uh, during the off season, different things. You know, they get, may get wounded fighting, carrying on, you know, summertime gets them, you know, cause, uh, every year I, I let <clears throat> tons of deer like that deer go in hopes that, uh, that they'll grow bigger and, uh, never do end up, you know, seeing them again. And, and so it's just a lot of, a lot of different things hit by cars, all kinds of, all kinds of different stuff. But, uh, enjoyable morning i'm going to go hop into 5500 now i'll take y'all along we're going got to go pick up the uh stump grinder from a uh, pretty good job i did uh yesterday so we're gonna go pick it up and bring it to the house just came in here yesterday evening just uh dropped everything where it was <laughs> yeah let's go get this Stump grinder. About to pick up the stump grinder. This job I did yesterday there was a uh, giant oak standing right there, and that dude had limbs all the way over to the house. Worked it down. No evidence of a tree ever being here. So not only did I pick up the stump grinder, I went and looked at a job on the way home. I got a price it quoted. I actually got two I need to price and quote. I looked at another one this week and sent a price on it, but um, stay. That's the worst part about it is having to go and look at them. And, and that's my least favorite part about the tree work is having to keep up with all that stuff. But so I'm going to go back this afternoon hunting. And this, the day y'all are watching this video is the day that it was filmed. I'm going to uh, have my bow this afternoon hunting with it and looking forward to going with it. I've had a lot of fun this year and I've only shot one deer, just a doe with my bow, my new bow. And and just, I've been a lot. I have watched a lot of deer. I just hadn't, hadn't shot any. I actually hurt this place over here and back. It was probably 2015, maybe 16. Um... I had shot a couple years prior to that. I had shot quite a few does over there, and it affected it in a negative way because it took it 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 took it till last year or so far to kind of come back. And in the mix of that time, now I shot some really good bucks too. But uh, what you do as far as a hunter can really affect the deer herd quite a lot because if you if you go in there and you shoot quite a few does and again like i said at the end of the video there's no doubt in my mind that we lose a lot of deer we we probably lose more deer during the all season or even during the deer season that, that, that get shot or wounded or something like that or they get hurt or whatever happens to them probably way more than what we ever realize that uh that do because you know from year to year i've watched these deer you know 
12 months out of the year. And so sometimes you just, you don't see certain deer no more and, and let them walk year after year after year. And they just, they stay that same, you know, you keep having those same size deer. It's like they get those two to three year old type size deer like that. And that's kind of where it, where it ends at. And I think the, the our hot summers here uh, with the, the midge flies and all that stuff that goes on, uh, I think it's pretty tough on. And you say, well, I don't ever see any dead deer, you know, or anything that can't be right. Well, the thing about it is, is if you don't find that carcass within a day or so of that deer dying and right there on it, you're never going to see it or know it, especially like in a pine thicket or cut over or something. You, you're never going to see it because within a day or so, the coyotes and buzzards and everything else, or they're going to clean it up so quick and fast. It's, it, it was crazy. I have been over there one time and I was going in there in August bush hogging and I smelled something. I got off the tractor and kept walking in the pine thicket and kept walking and walking and walked up on a little small buck that was rotten and it had velvet horns on its head and it was laying there dead. And Again, too, you know, if you got, say you've got 50 acres, if you don't walk every inch of that 50 acres every day, you would never see it anyhow, too. And and not many people are going to cover their entire piece of property, you know, every day of the week looking to see what's there, if there's any, you know, dead deer there. Because most of the time, once, once hunting season's over with, a lot of times people, they don't set foot back on the property till right there august september when it's time to start getting ready for for the deer season the upcoming deer season to to hunt again so you got a heck of a several month lapse there that um, nobody's on the property or to watch or or see anything so but i still enjoy it man i love getting out i love the outdoors love hunting and fishing and just really really always always have so uh, if you got opportunity if you to take a kid or something, take them, introduce it to them, because that's what the future of the whole hunting industry, fishing, everything depends on is, is new people getting started and the kids being introduced to it and getting them out and experiencing what it's all about. Because it's, it's nothing better cold morning like this morning, uh, watching the sun come up, uh, seeing the animals roam around. Love it. Never gets never gets old to me. So I'll be up in a tree this afternoon with my bow and uh I mean, if I have a if I have a big old doe come by me, I may let that air out of her deflate her there and let her let her go, man. Smoke her down. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.